Hey y'all. So I hope you're doing well from wherever you are watching from at whatever time. It is currently 3.30 a.m. October 22nd and I am in the car and I'm going to just start a candid conversation with you guys. This is something a little different that I don't normally do, um, but I was greatly inspired. <laughs> um, there's a YouTuber by the name of Doe Dash. Well, that's her channel name. I'm not sure if that's her name. I'm sure not. Um, just a really cool vibe doubt type person. Um, and I've been watching her videos because I can relate. I can relate. And y'all, I'm talking to you today and so is my, my zit today. And it's going to be all right. That's, that's how you know I don't even, right now, like I'm sharing this at 3.30. This is on my heart heavy. So zit is just going to have to come along the, with the conversation today. It's going to be all right. <laughs> don't y'all hate those? And they hurt too. I'm going to try to leave it alone though. Anyway, I am so, so like inspired and particularly video that she posted yesterday about getting her first YouTube check. And girl, I'm so happy for you. When I tell you I want to jump through that screen and dance in your living room with you. Yeah, like when she posted her AdSense check, And thank you for your vulnerability because we overcome by each other's testimonies, by the word of each other's testimonies. And without sharing that, then it would be hard for people to say, oh man, I believe God too. Or I believe that this can happen for me as well. And the good thing about sharing your story, I was, I was just thinking about this before those things happen, before those breakthroughs happen, before those blessings come, is that people get to see the struggle. They get to see the fight. And that's what this video is gonna be about today. The fight. Life, y'all, from what I have seen from age 30 to now, and I'm 43. And I don't look like what I've been through thank you Lord is that life has been a fight for me okay maybe not for everybody you might not be able to relate this might might not be your jam right but I know that I have had to fight all my life <laughs> seriously there wasn't much stability growing up my parents divorced. There was a lot of domestic violence in the home, drug addiction, abuse, alcohol abuse. Not from my mom, but my dad more so with the alcohol. My mom more so with the drugs. Um, not able to cope. Just, they loved me. I felt the love from them. I, I didn't go hungry. I don't care where we stayed at. You know, when we stayed a lot of places. We moved around a lot. Stayed with people, stayed in shelters, but we we ate. Me and my three siblings, we never missed a meal. I don't, I don't, I can't recall, but life was hard for as long as I can remember. So when I hear Do Dash when she says, "I've had to fight. I've had to." struggle for a long, long time, all my life and work hard. Yeah. In my twenties, I would have said to you, I made a lot of decisions that were foolish, you know, moving my baby daddy in and, you know, not requiring him to be accountable to help me. And, you know, I made some crazy moves, right? And uh, I had my first two children out of wedlock. And I wasn't too proud of that. 
And then I gave my life to the Lord and I wanted to do better. You know, I saw myself going on a downward spiral. I even tried to take my life, went through that. Um, but yeah, my babies were born healthy. Um, I had a third child when we got, we got married, got back together, got married, started doing ministry together. And I felt like life was going to get so much better in the area of finances. This is what I'm really focusing on right here in this video. And it got worse. <laughs> um, like I said, I grew up with the struggle, with the instability. Um, but one thing my mama was going to do was work. Okay. She was a CNA. She was a substitute teacher. She was a housekeeper. She was a house cleaner. She would go clean houses. My mama would work. Okay. So much so that we didn't see her much. She would work doubles at the rest home. Um, she would work two or three jobs with no car. She'll get there. You know, um, she rarely had a car when we were growing up. Okay, so I get that work ethic from my mama. Um, I joined the military once I graduated and, you know, she wouldn't let me stay home long without having no plan. Like, what you gonna do? You gotta go to school, you gotta work, you gotta do something. And I appreciate her instilling that in me because those are, those are values that are needed like like you never forget like how to ride a bike you know and i i appreciate you know my mom and may she rest in peace <clears throat> um and this conversation might be kind of here and there all over everywhere <laughs> but i hope that it can in help somebody somewhere um life is a fight It's a fight to stay off the streets, to, to even eat. As high as food is now, as high as the cost of living is now, it is a fight. It's a fight. You can look at this person that's homeless, right? Or who lives in the shelter. And you could say, oh, wow, what happened to them, right? But what if you missed three paychecks? What if you missed paying rent for two, three months? Would your landlord be generous? Would they be gracious to you? Would they be merciful? What if not, where would you be? Is there somebody that would take you in? The way family's set up now, I mean, it's far, few, and in between. Because they might be struggling too. And then it's hard for people to, you know, we're living in the last days. And this is why Jesus said these would be perilous times. Because he said, because the love of many will wax cold if you read that in context why will it be perilous times because the love of many will wax cold people won't be as compassionate people won't be as giving and loving and considerate of others and that makes times even more difficult it used to be well if i don't got you got we got and now it's every man for himself. You better get it on your own. And everybody's got a tight fist and a, holding everything with a tight grip. And not understanding that life is but a vapor. And none of these things can you carry to the hereafter. And so, yeah. Um... It's been seasons and seasons for me of knowing that I have this work ethic, but I've seen season after season after season of loss. And I'm saying that with a smile. And I know that's kind of like, what? How's she smiling saying that? 
because it's, it's what I found in the losses that I found my relationship with God through those losses. I found a depth with him, a healing within, a joy, a peace that nobody can take away that you can't buy, that you can't loan out. And nobody can come repossess that from me. Amen. Yeah, but that's how I can still smile and say this. Um, but I've seen times where now they say I've I've heard this a, a mentor of mine from afar off say that her mom would say you're only supposed to be in survival mode for a year, no more than a year, should you be in fight flight mode, survival mode. You know, without it taking a toll on your whole body, health, mind, soul, period. And I said, wow, well, it's a miracle that I'm still breathing. Because I've been in survival mode pretty much all my life. I can't tell you how many evictions. Now, in my 20s, like I said, I made very, very silly decisions, right? to find myself without a place to stay um yeah just messing around late just not doing what i should do my not taking care of my responsibilities but in my 30s i started trying real hard you know i finished i got my degree you know um I said, I'm going to school till the wheels fall off. And that's exactly what I did. Can't go right now because of it. Because <laughs> I tapped out of the undergraduate financial aid. I went and went and went till I couldn't go no more, literally. Um, now, you know, you can only get another round of um, financial aid if, you, if I would go back to get my master's. I mean, yeah, I'm coming up on my bachelor's. So only the only way I would be able to get more federal aid is if I go get my master's. They'll pay for that, but I'm tapped out at the undergraduate financial aid, if that makes sense. So anyway, I did all of that. I put the pedal to the metal, you know, and then we lost our home in 2010, you know, due to me not holding my husband accountable at the time, saying, hey, you got to be doing more than you see me doing. You got to be, if you see me out here, two, three jobs, then you, you, but the concept was, was never grasped. And so we went to these different places. We moved around. Um, I, I felt that God had said, move to a certain place. And to this day, he tells me that, yeah, I did tell you to do that, but you, you, you still got to fight. When you got there, you underestimated what it was going to take to stay afloat. You felt like you could move and things were going to change for y'all instantly. That things were just going to magically happen. And when I got there, the first move we made um, to Charlotte, North Carolina... And we stayed on Sugar Creek Road. I'll never forget. A, a very predominant area for prostitution, for drugs, homelessness, bed bugs in hotels on that road, you name it. And yeah, I found myself walking to the bus stop maybe two miles every morning in the freezing cold catching about three to four buses to get to Concord, North Carolina, which is another city outside of Charlotte, to get to work. And the job was paying pretty well, but that hotel fee once a week was $198. And God made a way, but I had to get up every morning at 
before the sun came up in the dark in the cold walk whether it was raining or not and i remember some mornings running from one bus to the other I would get to work. People done drove to work. I get to work. I'm drenched because I have walked and ran to hop on buses just to get there. And I've always felt like life was like that for me, that it was never easy for me, that it was always an extra fight for me to get the same things that other people had that they might have thought of as basic or normal, or minimum, but it was a fight for me. <laughs> and that was in my marriage, a fight. And no matter what I would try to do, right? Okay, even after I left my husband, my ex-husband and I, you know, I started my own business. I, you know, got connected to some people who were business owners, some foreigners. You know, they they really work harder than we do over here in the U.S. Like when they get over here and they get the opportunity, they take it. You know, and that's why you see so many foreign stores and businesses because they they do better here. And so. I started fighting that way. And when I saw 